Uh, what did you make of criticism of nurses by some of Mr Gogue's colleagues in the papers this morning? I think it's appalling. I mean, don't forget that Simon Clark, who made those comments, was the levelling up secretary until relatively recently, uh, trusted by the Tories to hold a cabinet post, and is now lecturing nurses about their need to budget at a time when most people working in the National Health Service are really, really struggling. They, we were clapping for them as heroes not very long ago. And, I, you know, if there's one thing I do agree with Michael Gove about, it's that we, they deserve our respect and our support, but most of all, they deserve a government that gets around the table and negotiates with them. They don't want to be out on strike. The public don't want to see these strikes. The only people who seem to want to provoke us into this standoff is the government who just won't sit down and sort this out. Um, do you also agree with him that it is inappropriate for the nurses and um, ambulance workers and 999 call handlers all to go on strike on the same day? People would die, surely. Look, I, I think that the biggest safety crisis in the National Health Service at the moment is because we have burnt out staff and not enough people. I went into my local a &E department, which you'll know very well, Kay and Wigan, last week, and I found nurses working around the clock really, really struggling to keep morale up because this is not the sort of care they want to provide to people. What they're trying to do is meet minimum safety standards so that they can care for people safety, safely and at times they feel that they're not even able to meet that. The, the management there left me in no doubt that these nurses, these paramedics, they are standing up not just for themselves, but for the National Health Service. And the problem that we've got in this government is not militant workers, it's a militant government. Who will be responsible if people die on the 6th of February because the ambulance workers, the 999 call handlers and the nurses are all on strike at the same time? The government bears entire responsibility for this. For months, the health secretary has been refusing to even meet the workforce to talk to them about their concerns. This isn't just about pay. It's also about conditions. It's about the fact that we don't have enough people in the National Health Service. And because of the way that ministers have treated people in the NHS over the last year, we've got more and more people saying to MPs like me, I don't know if I can carry on like this. I just don't know if I can stay. That is completely and utterly unsustainable. The Royal College of Nursing in Unison told us that although the recent meeting with the Health Secretary long overdue resulted in a change of tone, what it hasn't resulted in is a change of approach. We've got to treat this seriously. We've got to treat our frontline workforce as partners. There isn't a huge amount of money around, particularly since the Tories crash the economy. So we've got to take seriously the fact that we've got people on the front line saying we need help now. It's one of the reasons why we've said that we would tax non-DOMs properly and we would get that money into the National Health Service and raise staffing levels so that we don't have nurses on the front line telling us that it's fundamentally unsafe. OK, talk to me about levelling up. Uh, £2.1 billion um, from round two of the government's Leveling up fund, uh, the North West getting three hundred and fifty million pounds from that pot. Um, it's the highest uh, amount per region. You must be pleased with that. Look, in Wigan, we've we've been successful in our bid. Finally, we were unsuccessful last time, and we will welcome any money back that the government chooses to give us. We badly need investment, but it equates to only a fifth of the money that they've taken from us since Boris Johnson promised in 2019 to level up the country. It's And most places have lost. Four out of five places that asked for some money have got none at all. And even the winners are losing because it's the equivalent of handing us a fiver and nicking 20 quid out of our back pocket. We can do better than this Hunger Games style contest where we pit councils and communities against one another. We need a long-term sustained effort from the government to raise their ambition and to help us grow what are really exciting industries in the north of England, whether it's the film industry in the northeast or hydrogen in Ellesmere Port. This is the chance to get good jobs back into communities and money back into people's pockets and high streets thriving again. And instead, we've got these one-off pots of funding of our money and we're expected to be grateful. It takes an extraordinary arrogance from government to think that we should be running around celebrating when all they're doing is giving us small amounts of our own money back.
The average rent in Wigan is £1,100 a month. Do you think people who are struggling to pay that um, care at all that a Grade 2 listed building is having a bit of a makeover? We're extremely proud of Hayhall. It's one of the most beautiful places in the country and there's far more that we can do to showcase our culture and our heritage if we get proper investment from government. So we're, we're proud of that. We've got an exhibition planned by Theodore Major, one of the greatest artists in the country, who was from Wigan. He should be a household name. And with the efforts of Wigan Council and the people of Wigan, he will be. But for goodness sake, we've got people struggling to pay their mortgages. We've got people struggling to pay their rents. We've got the value of wages falling. The problem we've got, like every part of the country, is that we can't go out and spend on the high street when we haven't got good jobs and money in our pockets and choices and chances for young people so they don't have to get out to get on. We could create that if the government stopped micromanaging decisions about little pots of funding, bridges in Cumbria, picnic areas in the northeast, traffic lights in Harrogate, all decisions that Michael Gove and his colleagues have exerted an iron grip over over the last few years. Instead of micromanaging those decisions from Westminster and Whitehall, hand over power and resources and let us build a country that works. Well, you say that... Um... But um, Treasury analysis I'm looking at um, since the 6th of January says that Labour's announced £45.2 billion in spending commitments, leading to uh, a proposed rise of £1,650 in tax per household per year. That's not doable, is it? Well, it's also not true. I've seen that analysis and it includes things like free COVID tests, which we said should continue to be made available during the pandemic. We haven't made any kind of long-term commitment to free COVID tests for life. This is a desperate government, out of energy, out of ideas. We've been absolutely clear that we're not going to borrow to fund day-to-day -day spending because it's people's money. And they haven't got a lot of it, particularly at the moment, since Liz Truss crashed the economy. But we are going to invest in the future of this country for the long term because we believe that we can do better than these small pots of money on offer to places that have seen a decade of decay and decline. We have a contribution to make across the north of England and in every region and nation of this country. And we need a government that raises its game, backs us with real powers, real funding. You can bet if you'd handed over the powers and the funding for Northern Powerhouse Rail to the north of England without constant government interference, we'd have done it by now. Give us the power, give us the resources and we'll show you what we can do. Your leader's just released a video talking about, I mean, your, your party of the people is the point that he's trying to make, talks about how he grew up in a pebble dash, semi-detached house, he shared a bedroom, bunk beds um, with his brother when he was growing up. Now he's in Davos rubbing shoulders with the um, glitterati. Uh, which message should we take? Well, we make no apology for saying that the global financial system has to work for people in places like Wigan and right across the country. Take the global minimum corporation tax, which Joe Biden successfully pressed for. This is millions of pounds that was bleeding out of our communities and our public services because countries were in a race to the bottom trying to attract global corporations who didn't pay their fair share of tax. We, are, we make no apology for the fact that we will go wherever it takes to fight for the interests of the people of this country, but the difference between us and the Tories is that we don't just go to those places and schmooze, we go and fight for a fairer system and we make no apology for that. Um, yeah, but I mean, do you really need to go to Davos in order to make that point? I think you have to go and talk to people, like-minded governments, in order to make real change. Look at the problems we've got in this country. Frequent flooding across the north of England. We've got to start getting serious about working with other governments to tackle climate change. We've got trade policies that don't end up sustaining good jobs, that allow people that enough money to raise a family on. These are things that directly affect people's lives and the only way to solve them is to go and work with other like-minded governments in order to build a fairer system across the world. That's always been a core part of Labour's tradition over the last 100 years and it has to be again, not least because so many of these problems that people now face can only be solved at that global level.